the 17-year-old girl who was raising and sleeping with a baby tiger in her bedroom. It's a cub that now weighs almost 100 pounds. And Matt Gutman has more. You're on this tiger beat for us. Uh, yeah, Robin. And this tiger is one that will weigh about 500 pounds when he becomes a full adult. This girl, Felicia, has taken care of him since he was a tiny cub. She's given him milk. And yes, Robin, she is sharing her bed with one of the most dangerous animals in the world. <laughs> Meet the real tiger mom. Hi, I'm Felicia Frisco. I'm 17, and this is my Bengal tiger. His name is Will. Felicia, a 17-year-old from Tampa, has lived with this Bengal tiger since the day he was born. My friends think it's cool that I have a pet tiger because most of them only have a cat or a dog. Back then, he was cute, fuzzy, no bigger than a stuffed animal. Will is still nursing. And will nurse for just a few more weeks. Then he'll eat only meat. So where does he sleep? He sleeps in my bed every single night. That's right, in her bed, nestled in the leopard print blankets. As you can see in this video, licensed by ABC News. Even though he weighs close to 100 pounds, heavier than a Rottweiler. But Will is now an adolescent tiger. He will continue living with me till he's a year old, and he will be put into our educational shows to educate the public about the plight of the tigers in the wild. Felicia's family has raised exotic animals for generations. Good night, Will. But Jack Hanna says it's like sleeping with a live grenade. Every cat has a different killing ability. The tiger, it makes no difference. It's like they can go and it's a bomb going off wherever it hits. Tigers can be loving, but also unpredictable. A wild animal can usually, most of the time, be trained, but never tamed. Even the most expert handlers have met disaster. Roy Horn of Siegfried and Roy was nearly killed when the tiger he raised from a cub mauled him. Sandra Harold's chimp Travis nearly killed her friend. And Jim Jablon spent a month in his lion's cage. Hold on, honey. Just to prove that lions don't make good pets. One of the reasons Hannah says pooches make better bedfellows. No brasher, you can see he's something else. <laughs> he looks like a big old rug. And those dogs are a lot cheaper, too. It costs hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to care for such an exotic animal. One of the reasons that so many are abandoned and a major reason that folks like Jack, Hannah, Robin are lobbying to push for more legislation to make obtaining these animals a lot harder to get. They are expensive. Matt, great having you here in the studio with us. Thank you so much. And joining us now is Dr. Bhagavan Antal. He is the founder of Tigers, the Institute of Greatly Endangered and Rare Species. And I know you have some cats around you right now, Doc. Yeah, about 67 tigers live here at our preserve in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. These tigers are trained animals that work with us. Uh, there's one going to walk up here and say hi to me now. This is Amar. Amar here is a, about a five-year-old big tiger child. Hello, would you like a drink? Gorgeous. And this is what they grow to be. He's a beautiful kid. He's a snow tiger. He's that full white coloration instead of the standard orange and black that you saw on that mm -hmm. other tiger. Well, let, let me uh, ask you something. Because he's a trained tiger. Trained, but as um, we heard our good friend Jack Hanna said, you can train them, but you can't tame them. But I want to ask you, because I know you also were uh, with Felicia's family. You provided them with the cat, sold them the cat that she, that she has. How well do you know the family, and how well do you know how good she is with these types of animals. I know the family over time. I know that they're ninth generation circus um, performers that have raised and worked with animals. That tiger did not come from us. It was born at their facility from their own animals, which aren't our animals. There's no connection between the bloodline of, of the two different animals, but they are professional trainers that live their whole life with these animals, and that gives them the opportunity to have an understanding of the psyche of these animals and how to care for them. She may have that young cub in her room and be taking care of him and raising him, but her mother and father, who are full-time professional animal trainers, also live there with her and have many other tigers right outside the door that are part of their living. It's something that they do 24-7, which is entirely different than saying that you have a tiger for a pet. A tiger for a pet is a much more complicated thing. A tiger for a pet doesn't work out. It's that you'd have to have thousands of hours to work with an animal to create the bond that we would have with a guy like Amar here. This opportunity to be like this with a person requires a lifetime's work and understanding, tens of thousands of hours.
Uh, Felicia's done it since she's a little girl. She's been with many other wild and exotic animals from the time she's a little baby. So she's got a basic understanding. Her father has a much greater understanding, having done it since he was a small child. He spent that same time. Much like my own children have done, they've grown up to be animal trainers. Not to have pet tigers, but to train them. We work for the movie and television business, Ace Ventura, Jungle Book, Dr. Doolittle, movies like that. And we do live shows like we do at Jungle Island in Miami every day. We have animals out there where we interact with them. And there is a big difference having one as a pet and being a professional as you are. I realize that wholeheartedly, but you know, as we saw in Matt Gutman's piece, there have been times Siegfried and Roy, he too raised from a cub, the tiger that uh, went on to attack them. That they, sometimes they just don't know their own strength. And we think of this 17-year-old girl. Uh, how can you say it's safe? You just don't know. It's not about... It's not about safe, it's about an animal trainer doing a business and working with that animal. That Felicia is risk-free is by no means true, okay. but neither are most 17-year-olds behind the wheel of a car, right? They die like flies across the country. It's, it's, a, it's like having an extreme sport in your life. The potential for accident and injury is certainly there. It's not that raising them from babies makes them behave by any means either. Mm -hmm. It's that working with them in a professional manner makes them end up having the personality of a trained animal, which is still never a tame animal. There's a world of right. difference. Amar can't sleep in my bed. Amar can go for a walk. He can go on a movie set. He can work as a wildlife ambassador and teach people about endangered species. And the work that we do running the Rare Species Fund, our organization for wildlife care around the world, but he's not tame. And Felicia's really not pretending she's got a tame pet as much as she is working with him. When he gets bigger, he won't be in the bed. He'll be with the other seven or eight tigers that live right outside the door. And let me that ask are you about that. That are the parents. Right. And that's, that's the question I want to ask. I know that your heart is in the right place and the work that you're doing. And how fair, though, is it to these animals where they are they're born to be in the wild and to to tame them, which I know you're saying you're training them, not tame them, but you're, you're, you are, in essence, making them like a pet. How fair is that to the animal? Well, fair becomes hi highly subjective, right? It's all about these animals being working wildlife ambassadors, raising, for us, hundreds of thousands of dollars that goes back into wildlife projects around the world to save them and many other endangered species. The public gets to know animals, loves them, and puts money towards what they understand. If you didn't have them out where people could see them, it would be different. I believe this tiger has a 100 times better life than a tiger locked in a cage. New sights, sounds, and smells that he experiences by going out and seeing new things give him a much greater life than he could ever experience in a cage. Well, Doc Antle, I know, as I said, your heart is in the right place, and we appreciate your time this morning. It's absolutely beautiful. And I know the debate will, will continue from, from here until the end of time. But thank you, sir. Thank you, Doc. Be well. <laughs> thank you. Have a great day. Uh, you too. Uh, weigh in on our shout-out board. Let us know what you think.